I call the Honourable Member Materia Ture. Tenakwe, Ms Ture. Tenakwe, Mr Speaker. Tenakwe, Mr Speaker. Tenakwe, I want to just thank and agree with a great deal of what Chris Hipkins has uh, just said in the House. Um, I think he's absolutely right that the process by which we are increasing the transparency and the independence uh, setting of MPs' allowances and expenses uh, and um, salary is a very good thing and it is continually evolving and we've had a great deal more change over probably the last ten year, five years, probably the last five years than we probably had in the previous 30. So, the, so clearly the Parliament is uh, doing its best to both respond to public issues, respond to media scrutiny and just respond to a modern environment. We're in the 21st century now. We operate in a different environment than we did uh, last century. Um, I agree absolutely about the concern of representation, that this is a House of Representatives and wealth is not a criteria for entry here and should never be. It has been in the past, I think, but it should never be ever again. That anyone from any walk of life should be able to, be rep to, to come to this House based on their community support, on, national, on the nation's support, uh, to represent their people and their interests here. The, I, I would disagree with Chris just on two, on one, one issue really, which is around the public view of MPs and MPs' expenses. I have more optimism, actually, about the public view. And <laughs> Ian Lee's gallery raises his eyebrows, and understandably so. We have, but I would just note for the House that we have been debating this legislation which is of intense interest to a few around MPs' expenses and allowances. Uh, there has been very little public discourse or discussion about the debate that we are having and about to conclude. Uh, we are doing so during a week where the Herald has run, New Zealand Herald has run three stories on MPs expenses and other media have been doing rolling stories as well and there has been a little bit of heat around that but nothing like what we saw in 2009 and 10. Uh, and we also have the issue, that apparently people tell me uh, that the Remuneration Authority is soon to announce uh, um, what the MPs' pay will be for the next 12 months. Um, and yet, there hasn't been this great public fury. There has been a public discussion. There have been different views expressed, and expressed publicly, expressed on Twitter and on social media and on, in the news when people are asked. And there is, I agree, some cynicism from the public about how all of our expenses and allowances and, and salaries are set and our involvement in all of that. But again, nothing like the public backlash that we might have expected in the earlier, in earlier years, and nothing like the public backlash that I think MPs are concerned about. I think that the public, in the main, understand that we need to be paid for our job, that we need financial resources to do our job and to do our job properly. And what they expect from us in exchange is transparency on how we use those public resources, uh, that we do our jobs properly and that we are, we are a good workforce um, and do what is expected of us, uh, and that we don't take uh, personal benefit from the use of that public money beyond our pay. Those, that's a perfectly reasonable expectation, and there has been a perfectly reasonable, in my view, debate about this. I'm very surprised at how little heat there has been this week comparatively speaking. So I have more, a more optimistic view about the public, their view of what is, how we are managing this issue. And I do think it signals very strongly that there will be further change. As the House knows, I, uh, the Green Party did not agree with the travel expenses for MPs remaining with the Speaker. We preferred the original bill that came to the House, which said that the travel expenses would also go to the Remuneration Authority, along with the accommodation allowances and other issues. Uh, we talked about that in the Select Committee. We came to an agreement that we could get as far as we could get with that committee. We put those issues back to this House. The House decided not to support that view, such as the democratic process. But again, there's no great heat in this discussion. It is simply about how we are managing to evolve and taking the steps as far as we can go. We are very pleased with the changes that the legislation has made, make no mistake. We're very pleased with the recognition of those of MPs being entitled to support 
uh, where they have an impairment that prevents them from being able to use um, the same supports that MPs without impairments get. We think absolutely that is a role, a financial contribution to managing the barriers that those impairments place on MPs' engagement should be the responsibility of the entire organisation and not just on that MP. We are very pleased that accommodation is moving, allowances are moving to the remuneration authority. That was raised this week. We are very pleased that the Green Party's original proposal for the release of our expenses that we started in, 19, in 2009 has now been put in legislation. Because up until now it's been a policy, it hasn't been a legislative requirement, and now it is. That's fantastic. That is the process of change. That is what, that is what progress is, the process of change. So great, that's all great work. Uh, there is still a question, and Chris Hipkins raised this, around how to deal with the issues of personal benefit from the travel allowance. And Chris Hipkins is quite right that if we were to say that we would keep the travel allowance in-house under the Speaker, uh, but that we would restrict it to parliamentary purpose only, we would have to have a conversation a discussion about what constitutes parliamentary purpose. And we would need to have that with the public, because it is a public interest in determining how that works. And there may be a construction of rules or guidelines, rules actually, not guidelines, that we would develop to show that we could both do our jobs, do them effectively, represent our communities, return to our homes, as the example that was given. All of those things within a set of rules that were largely agreed to by consensus by all members of the House and by the public. That is possible. We can have that conversation. And I expect that we will. This is not the end point. There will be more change. And those conversations will get easier over time, as this one has been much easier than the last time we talked about these issues. Increasing transparency is great. It's good to see that in the bill. MPs will always be under scrutiny. I just would note one thing in case of interest to the public, if, if it is of interest, is of course that MPs are not employed. So we are here by operation of law. We are only removed from our role by operation of the law. And so that is why we have to, why our salary, for example, and the other tools that we need for, for our jobs are uh, incorporated into the law because there is no, we have no legal structure for our employment. So we are in a very unique situation uh, compared to any other group of employees anywhere else in the country and why so much of this is public and why I don't know about others but it seems often that um, we read about our salary increases in the newspaper and don't <laughs> little small things like that that make our lives more interesting uh, and uh, Bring some public does bring some some real public transparency into the work that we do, Mr. Speaker. Green Party will support this legislation. We see it as a great step. We're very pleased about the nature the nature of the conversation that's been had over this legislation, particularly given the um, some of the political heat this week. But we do remind members that uh, there will be calls for more change. So the question then becomes: How do we want to respond to those calls, and how do we? Uh, how do we express to the public that we do trust them to acknowledge the right that we have to do our job properly, um, to the tools that we need to do our job, and to fair remuneration for it? My final comment, Mr. Mr. Speaker, is that it will always be difficult for us particularly in terms of MPs' pay, for as long as there is severe inequity in this country, for as long as the minimum wage is a political decision made by the Prime Minister and not made independently of the political environment, and for as long as there continues to be an increase, significant increase in high salaries of which MPs also receive, uh, and very, very small incremental increases, if any, in the lowest wages. That inequity will continue to bring uh, more scrutiny on MPs when we are making decisions about other people's pay and other people's employment conditions. Every year we go through cycles of making changes to their pay, changes to their employment conditions, and yet uh, squeal a little when those decisions are being made about our own. That is not fair, and we will need to change that also. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the honourable member Kemaljeet Singh Bakshi, Sasriya Kal.